Hello, and welcome to the July Book Club, Logos and Mythos Book Club. Um, thank you guys for joining us. So as you can see, my husband Tony is with us again this week, or this month, sorry. And we decided that we would do something a little special, because today is actually our 13th anniversary. So, um, yeah, we made it this far. All right, there's hope for the rest of you out there, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we decided we would do something special and kind of talk about couples reading together. Um, and so, yeah, so that's going to be our topic tonight. But before we get to that, I wanted to remind you guys that my summer reading challenge is going on right now. And so if you haven't jumped in on that yet, you still have plenty of time. We have until September 2nd is when I'm going to reveal the winners. And there will be two winners this summer. Um, so on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, I have specific posts that I'm, I'm putting up. So Saturday is Book Selfie Saturday. And so I have to give you guys a little bit of an apology that uh, I have not actually done any real book selfies. And there really is a reason for that. It's that my phone has not been working for me properly for really, honestly, it's been about a year now. Um, and I, it's on the list to get fixed and hopefully I'll get that fixed soon. So that's why I haven't been doing them. So thank you guys though, for those of you who have been doing book selfies, thank you so much for sharing those. Um, and if you don't want to put your face in it, I get it. Just take a picture of your book, but I would so much prefer to see uh, you with the book that you're reading um, or put your book in a cool place. You know, where, where do you like to read? Where's your favorite place to read? Things like that. And then on Sunday, it's sharing is caring Sunday. And I have a different uh, thing for you to share each Sunday. I know we've talked about uh, favorite authors from when you were a child, favorite books from when you were a child. Um, we've had a few different ones. I've had you guys share my page with some of your friends and some other things like that. Uh, and then on Mondays is our book club. Okay, so every week we have a book club. Uh, I put up a post. Now, once a month we do this live. And then, you, but you can post throughout the week. You don't just have to post on Monday on that particular post. I want to know what you guys are reading. Um, if you have any recommendations, like maybe you just finished a book that you really enjoyed, share it with us. Um, or if you're looking for a recommendation, ask us what you're looking for and we'll come up with some recommendations for you. So that's kind of the, the thing behind that. So for each of these posts, whenever you interact with them, you get points. And I am keeping up with the points. So one of our uh, Summer Reading Challenge winners will have the most points of all of those who have been participating. And then the second winner will have read the most books. And you guys can find my post, um, and I'll try to remember to put in the comments here under the video uh, a link to that post that shows you all of the um, different categories for the type of book to read. I think I've got six plus a couple of bonuses. So um, anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying that. I know several people have already been telling me that they're finishing some of the books in the different categories, and it's exciting to see what everybody's reading. So I hope you're enjoying that and participating. Um, and then, yeah, if you guys have any uh, recommendations that you want to tell about what you've been reading in the comments here, we'll get to that at some point this evening. Or if you're asking for a recommendation, go ahead and put that in the comments as well. If you're watching this when it's not live, so later, if you're watching it later, you can still put comments in there, ask for suggestions, or make some suggestions of your own. And I will definitely respond. So. Uh, without further ado, I thought we would talk a little bit first about our backgrounds because um, Tony and I have kind of different backgrounds when it comes to reading. Uh, in fact, Tony wrote a great blog post for me a couple of years ago for my blog about growing up as not a reader. And I grew up as a reader, but he did not. So we kind of come from different backgrounds when it comes to that. Um, and when we got married, I, I mean, he was reading a good deal because at the time he was in uh, grad school, and so he was reading a lot, but it was really for school. So he still wasn't, didn't have the opportunities to just read for fun. Yeah, it was really pleasure. pleasure reading. It was, it was for seminary, so it was a lot of, a lot of reading for that, but not a whole lot of, you know, pleasure reading. Yeah. And so... Um, I guess really kind of what 
what made you start wanting to read more fiction and stuff like that? Um, well, I think fiction, the, the reason that uh, I started reading fiction was um, narratives easier to read, especially if you're not a, not a reader um, or haven't grown up as a reader. Um, and it was really easy for me as someone with uh, mild uh, dyslexia, um, narrative just uh, worked better. And I got some really good advice from a friend that said, uh, that, who was a you know avid reader himself, said just start reading things that you're interested in and, and that'll help you. So as, um, you know, one who grew up playing video games and watching TV, which is, you know, nothing wrong with that, but just that kind of being my only um, medium that, that I was, my brain was receiving information from, I was, I was used to so short segments, um, you know, three second burst and then a different image, things like that. So um, looking at a page of black and white for minutes on end was difficult, but narrative, something that's pushing a story, um, made, it, made it easier. And then, um, you know, as an adult, realizing that that was what was going to help me read um, pages and pages of nonfiction, whether it's systematic theology or um, biographies or, or something else. Um, so it, it just helps your brain be able to do that um, better. And then, you know, everyone loves a good story, so it's just – Sometimes good to, to read a, a nice nonfiction um, story that's, um, you know, a more in-depth and imaginative form of entertainment than you're going to get from other mediums. Yeah. And I think, you know, you definitely did say that reading fiction helped so much with yeah. the school stuff that he had to read and the more difficult um, books that he had to read. So if you know, I know a lot of couples, um, this is probably a similar story to a lot of couples where maybe um, the guy didn't grow up reading. I mean, that's typically the way it works. Not always. Um, but sometimes, you know, that that does tend to be the case. So if, you know, if you have a friend, even just a friend, not doesn't have to be your spouse or um, significant other, but even just a friend who isn't a big reader, um, but they kind of would like to, you know, just start them off with fiction. And I would, I always recommend, you know, find something that they're interested in. And, you know, a lot of times for some people, and now this is more from my experience with kids, um, to find something that they're interested in, sometimes it, it's actually nonfiction that gets them interested because maybe they're interested in um, dinosaurs or maybe they're interested in planets or, you know, whatever the case may be, just find something that they're interested in. Um, I know your, some of your favorite fiction books are. Oh yeah. Well, Tom Clancy novels were, um, one of the ones I first started reading, um, I guess as an adult. Um, but yeah, I mean that, that kind of political thriller, um, you know, it's just interesting to me. So, you know, Tom Clancy novels are definitely something that helped me become um, a better reader. And then, um, and they're also, they're also challenging. I mean, he doesn't write, um, you know, there's sometimes you have to get your dictionary out. Um, you know, he, he writes well and he writes, um, you know, to, a, a more intelligent genre. I would think even though, you know, you think and you, and you hear the, in the Jack Ryan shows and everything. So you think it's kind of more action adventure, but it, I mean, there's, you know, it's an intelligent, it's an intelligent genre that, that he writes. So um, it's really great if you're trying to expand your horizons a little bit, but still want a great story that's going to uh, keep you occupied. Um, and then beyond that, I mean, um, some of the more classic literature, um, you know, Lord of the Rings, um, you know, The, uh, the Hobbit. Um, and even when I was a kid, um, books like Of Mice and Men and uh, things like that were, were good reads. All right. Yeah. So also, um, you know, something that you were saying when you were talking about Tom Clancy, uh, I would love to hear if anybody has seen the new Jack Ryan shows and you have also read some of Tom Clancy's books. I would love to know what you think about them because I haven't seen the shows yet and I'm, I'm kind of curious. I really do like Tom Clancy novels. Um, so that's just kind of an aside. If you if you've seen those and you have read the books, I'm curious. Um, so when uh, I guess Tony and I started reading together, um, probably one of the first things was we did have a systematic theology class together. So right. in that case, we were kind of sharing a textbook and reading those kinds of things. Um, 
And it's okay, Amy. There's still hope for you. I know. I haven't given up on you yet, Amy. <laughs> Amy hasn't read The Hobbit yet. I've been after her for like, how long has it been? How many years have we known each other? <laughs> she has tried. I'll give you that. And good job, Eli. All seven Yeah, we're going to talk about Harry Potter in a little while. Yes, good we job. actually are. That's on our list. So that's that's one of the series that we've read together. Um, so yeah, we started off with you know kind of a textbook thing, and that was more of you know we were in the class together. So of course we're going to discuss. Well, the systematic theology text is really expensive, so we can only buy one. <laughs> that's true. They're like you know ninety bucks a pop for the you know yeah. used version, <laughs> and we were kind of broke. So there is that. Um, but another book that we read, and, and Tony reminded me, I couldn't remember if we were dating or if we were married yet, but we read uh, The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, which right. um, it was it was good, I think. It was a good read. It, it really helped us as a younger couple. I mean, we were not even engaged at the time, but it was really the first time where it forced us to kind of figure out how the other one thinks and to um, talk on a little bit deeper level about uh, worldview and, you know, things like that, uh, which we probably wouldn't have done had we just been, you know, hanging out, um, just watching movies or hanging out with friends or whatever, you know, kind of forced us to get into that, um, you know, out of that, out of our comfort zone and just talking about things that were a little deeper. Mm. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, sure. New kind of date night. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a great time at all. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we read several different things. So some of the things that we read together, we actually read together out loud. And that was The Hobbit. I think that was probably the first was, book that we actually read out yeah. loud um, together at the same time. Um, and then we, most of the other books, though, we read kind of at different times, but so we could kind of talk about them. And those were, uh, I made a, a little list here. We read The Hunger Games trilogy. Um, we also read all the Harry Potter books. I told you guys we were going to get back to those. And then we also read Without Remorse, speaking of Tom Clancy. Right. And those were some of the books that we each read um, close in, in time to each other. And so we were able to discuss it. So uh, the good thing about reading together, if you're, if you're actually sitting there reading the book out loud to one another, um, I mean, that's kind of a cool dynamic in itself. It's a way to, to spend time together and all of that stuff. Um, and yes, Amy, I have read To Kill a Mockingbird, and I do I did like it, so ha-ha. <laughs> to Kill a Mockingbird is great. It really is. <laughs> um, so I'm getting distracted. Shelly said something, too. I'm coming back to that. I promise I'm not overlooking you. Um, <laughs> anyway, so... Yes, reading together, and then also reading books at the same time, but not out loud together. So we're coming back and we're discussing. Um, and that kind of leads into the benefits, because as we were talking about what we were going to say, we were talking together about, well, what are some of the benefits that we've had from actually reading together as a couple? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first one, <clears throat> when we read The Hobbit together, uh, it, was, it was a time where we were just looking – to spend some quality time together, some better time together. And, um, you know, look, it's, it's easy for us to veg. Um, and we do more than we care to admit, but, um, reading a book together, it's, it's, act, it's a lot more active, um, than just a passively looking at a screen. So even though you're not necessarily talking about your own thoughts, you're reading a book out loud, you're still listening to the other person you're, you know, listening to, to them reading and, and you have to pay attention because um, it's real easy. Um, I, I found myself when she was reading The Hobbit, like drifting off to sleep because someone's reading a story for you. So you have to, and you have to say that um, you have to focus and engage that person, but it's, it's a good time to, to kind of spend some good time together as a couple. Um, and then it, it also, um, one of the things we were talking about uh, actually tonight on the drive home, uh, reading together, whether it's reading like we did when we did The Hobbit, we would, do a chat uh, she would read a chapter i would read a chapter and and that's how we would we did it but whether you do that or, or it's just you're reading the same book at the same time it, especially if you're married and have kids it gives you something to talk about other than work and kids which usually is the default topic because it's it's what your day consists of so this is like a it's like a ready-made um, topic that's not not that uh, which i think is really important for a for a healthy relationship 
and um, you know, just learning more about each other. I mean, when you're talk, when you're discussing something, and I mean, obviously, you can do this with TV shows too. But I feel like books tend to go deeper in some ways. And when you're sitting there and you're just staring at a screen, there is a certain um, element of kind of detaching yourself from one another. So that's where I think the difference lies. But a story is a story. So discussing story, I think, is a great way to get to know each other better, a great way to um, get to know yourself better. I mean, just as a as an individual reader. Um, but then as a couple, you know, you're actually talking through, you know, did you like this character? Okay, I didn't like this character. Well, why? And then you're kind of explaining. And and the same thing can be done, you know, if you're reading in a book, book club setting. <laughs> okay, if you're reading with friends, if you're re reading with people like that, it's just, you know, when you're a couple and you're together all the time, it's a little bit easier to have that kind of dynamic. So um, anyway, so yeah. yeah. I think um, there are a lot of benefits to be had. And something that I was going to say is, you know, if you guys have read books together um, with your significant other, we'd love to hear about it. So, like, in the comments, tell us, you know, something that you've read together. Um, did you read it together out loud? Did you read it together separately and then discuss it? Like, we're curious how, how that worked and what were some of the benefits that you found, especially if you found some different benefits than we have. Our, our dog's cat. chasing our cat behind <laughs> us, and I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> okay, those of y'all who know us know we've got, like, two crazy dogs and a crazy cat, and they're just having a blast back there. So, um, yes, I love it. Yay, Dominic, read to Shelly. I love it. And I really do want to see the Jack Ryan shows. They Everybody that I've talked to who's seen them has liked them, so I'm, I'm encouraged by that. I definitely want to watch that, but anyway. So if you have an Amazon Prime account and you'd like to let us borrow, you can PM <laughs> us and give us the password and be great. Anyway. <laughs> so let's see. What else were we going to say about reading together? I mean, it's just, it's a great way to just spend time together and do something different other than just kind of zone out. Yeah. I also like that it, it, it allows you to, uh, especially depending on what you're reading as you grow and you're reading things that are a little more, um, you know, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, I mean, every book, like when we read The Hunger Games, I mean, you know, there's a worldview involved with that. So you get to talk to you get to talk to another person, you get to talk to your significant other about what do they think about that particular worldview? Does that, you know, does that mesh at all with your beliefs? Does it does it not and why? So it, it does help you to um, understand each other better and, and also to grow in your thoughts and your ideas about uh, what we really think about uh, things that matter um and you know that's something that it's it's harder to do um just out of thin air so when you have a, a tool that kind of gets you there um it's a great discussion topic um it's a great way to have something to talk about and to think uh, as a couple um it is and you know we didn't i didn't really talk about us talking about this so i'm kind of springing this on tony but Going back to our backgrounds, I grew up a reader. He did not. Um, so coming from my side of it, um, I think I said this a little bit earlier. If you can find something that's interesting to the other person, um, you know, just find a topic they're interested in or something that you think that they would enjoy and just encourage them to do that. What would you say to people who really aren't readers to get them to <clears throat> encourage them if they do have a partner who is a big reader right. to actually join in on that? Um, yeah, I think it would be first don't don't jump off the deep end. I mean, if you don't if you don't read very often, don't get you know a six hundred page book and about something you may or may not be interested in and, and think you're going to make it through. You're just setting yourself up with failure. Um, find, find something accessible, accessible and something you're interested in. So, I mean, if you're interested in, if you're interested in sports, read, read a biography about a sports figure you're interested in. If you're, you know, whatever it is you're interested in, if you're interested in music, read a biography about, about a band you like, something like that. Um, and just grow from there. So how long does it take? I don't know. It's just, it's different for everybody. It's, it really is. Um, 
I can tell when I take breaks. Um, maybe it's just a really busy time at work and I don't get to read very often. Um, you know, I read some um, academic journals. Um, if I haven't been reading for a while, it's hard to make it through an article. Uh, it just is. I'm just the way my brain works. And, you know, so sometimes I'll find myself saying, all right, I haven't read for a while. So I'm going to pick up a novel that's a little bit more like brain candy just to get me used to looking at black and white pages again. Um, or, you know, I'm going to read for 10 minutes, you know, 15 minutes instead of 10, just to get back into it. Cause it, it's like anything, if you don't, if you don't read, if you don't, you know, it, yeah, we got a lot of things, especially now with, you know, as much as we're on phones and computers, just to navigate daily life, it does affect our attention span. I think it's down to like 14 seconds now for the average American. And don't, don't quote me on that. Uh, I heard that statistic somewhere. And so, you know, you have to combat against that. So I would say just to allow yourself some grace. Don't, if you, like, if I compare myself to the volume of material Joy can read in a month or a year, I'm just going to end up disappointed and, and depressed because I'm not going to be able to keep up. So um, just set realistic goals for yourself, read things you're interested in, and then, um, and then push yourself, stress yourself to read things um, that are good for you that you may not necessarily um, may not necessarily want to read because they're entertaining, but, but they're, they're good for you. Um, a good history book. I mean, I would recommend it was a great book and it's very well written called lies. My teacher told me, and it's a history book and it really delves into some of the, um, you know, so, some of the misconceptions that we may learn in high school history. And it's, it's really interesting. It's nonfiction and it's a, but it's a kind of told in a story. So, um, it's really good. So just, there's, there's a ton of stuff out there. I just have to look for it, ask for recommendations and yeah, just go on Amazon and type in what you want and see what pops up. I mean, all sorts of stuff will pop up. Mm -hmm. And I forgot that we both read that book as well. Last my teacher taught me or something like that. And that, that was a good book to discuss as well. Um, yeah. So on the other side, you know, especially to you ladies, don't expect, you know, a non-reader husband to read Pride and Prejudice. Ain't going to no, happen. Gonna happen. Don't start there. Y'all need, <laughs> you have to have some, um, yeah, it may, it may you have to meet in the it. middle. Like he was saying, like read a Drew Brees biography. His biography is great. It is really good. Yeah, I read it. It's really good. And I actually haven't read that one, but I mean, that could be a really good place to start. I mean, especially we live in the New Orleans area. So, you know, people around here at that, that would be something that would be interesting to most guys around here. So yeah, that's a great idea. And, um, anyway, so yeah. So if you guys have any, if you're asking, if you want some book recommendations, Go ahead and be putting that in the comments. If you are uh, wanting to share a good book that you've been reading, go ahead and put that in the comments. Or if you have anything um, that you want to share about couples reading together, put that in the comments now. Um, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Um, I'm going to read my blurb to you in just a minute. So for any good thing, which you guys um, have probably, if you've been following me for a while, you know, any good thing is my Southern contemporary fiction novel that is coming out in September. Um, it is super close to being ready. I'm uh, almost done proofing the formatted version of the manuscript, which is super exciting. And I'm waiting for my cover and a few other little details, um, setting up all of my um, author profiles, publisher platforms, all this kind of stuff to get the book actually uploaded so that it can be printed and all of that kind of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to make a book happen. Um, and that's what I'm working on right now. So, but we are super close and I'm going to read that blurb in just a minute. Before I do, I want to mention my shirt. Okay. This says support your local writer, mom, in case you haven't seen it yet. And these were created by my amazing friend, Autumn Lindsay. She is an author and she is the founder, um, co-founder of Writer Moms Inc. And this shirt is super fun and I love it. So anyway, um, if you happen to know a writer mom and she's looking for a great support system on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, just look up Writer Moms Inc. And it is an amazing community and I am so thankful for those ladies. Um, so anyway, Without further ado, I'm going to read my blurb. Okay, so a blurb, which is a funny word, I know. But um, it's basically just, it, this is what is on the back of a book cover and um, tells a little bit about the book. <clears throat> so here we go. Jack Calhoun recovers from one tragedy and its consequent, 
consequential addiction enough to glimpse a shimmer of hope for his future until the day of the second accident. Instead of heading to college with his childhood sweetheart, Rachel, Jack flees the rural southern town that blames him for every bad thing and leaves his loved ones behind. His journey for purpose, if not peace, brings Jack face to face with war in Iraq's desert, with his past nightmares, and with a deeper battle on a mountain peak. Along the way, he both finds and loses parts of himself. Perhaps it was never purpose he required, but the ability to discern selfishness from sacrifice. Will he cast off a lifetime of crippling guilt to rest in redemption? Or will peace remain as elusive as any good thing for Jack? And that is any good thing. And I'm super excited and cannot wait to share it with you guys. Um, September is when it will be on shelves near you. So um, we wanted to mention that um, any good thing is, well, I'm going to let you tell it just because it's weird for me to say it myself, but okay. well, why we thought it was would be a potentially a good book for couples to read, um, though it is a good book for, for anyone, male yeah. or female. Um, yeah. Um, I think it, I think it is a, a good book um, just in general. Uh, obviously, I've read it um, in a couple of iterations. Um, but particularly for couples, if you're looking for a book to read together, uh, it's sometimes hard to agree on a genre. Um, it really is. And this book in particular, without trying to, I don't want to give any of the plot away, but, um, it really is a story that engages what we, what people go through and, and everyone can relate to that. Um, you know, um, it just in the in the gamut of human life, I mean, some people just have a little bit different personalities, men and, and women. So some are maybe more um, a little more stoic, more emotional, or drawn to different stories. Um, but this this book really does joy really does engage uh, just the human condition uh, and the human experience, um, especially um, you know, as it, as it relates to her main character in um, kind of his search for, for peace and for hope in his life. Um, it engages things that we all, you know, questions we all ask, um, you know, does somebody love me? Um, what is, what is my life about? What is my purpose? Um, why are we here? Um, so those big questions are engaged. So whether you're um, a reader or not, you've had, you've thought about those things. And, um, and this book engages that and it engages it in a, in a story that's, um, that's mostly serious, but sometimes fun. And, um, it's, uh, it, it, I mean, it's a good story. Um, so I think it's, I think the main reason it's good for couples is it, it engages the human condition and it engages human emotions and, um, but I don't think there's, you know, it's, it's not, you know, designed for couples, so to speak, um, or anything, but I do think it, it fits that if, if people are looking for something to read together that I think both people would enjoy. Um, I think it's somewhat, um, uh, outside of, um, outside of those maybe, um, I don't want to say genre cause it has a genre, but it's somewhat outside of, of, you know, this is a book for, you know, relationship. This is a book for, you know, action. You know, it's pretty good, um, pretty good mixture of just, you know, Jack Calvin's life and how that, um, how that mirrors reality. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like I knew going into this because I mean, obviously I'm a female, my main character is a male, which is a little bit, I mean, it's not completely unusual, but it, it was kind of a leap um, in some ways. Um, a lot of people might say, hey, you need to just write with a female protagonist because you're a female. Right. And I kind of broke out of that mold. Um, and I also knew going into it that I was taking a little bit of a risk because most of my followers are females just because that's just kind of the way that it works out. I mean, when you start off, you know, most of your followers are going to be um, – similar to you in a lot of ways. So most of my followers are females. Um, so this book is kind of a mixture of like, I really do believe most of my female followers will enjoy the book, but I also know and knew deep within that 
um, male readers would also enjoy it. And so when I chose my beta readers, I tried to choose um, kind of, I think I, I, I think it was pretty half and half. I, in fact, I may have had more male readers. In fact, yes, I did. I had more male readers than I had female readers. Um, just to kind of test out that theory, I also had a mixture of non-readers with my readers, and even the non-readers um, enjoyed it. And uh, mm -hmm. the the males, you know, kind of gave me some good feedback on, you know, that I, I did okay handling a male protagonist. Um, and so for that reason, I felt like, you know, this really would be a good book for a couple to read because there are things in it that women are going to enjoy and there are things in it that men are going to enjoy. And so then they can come together and kind of discuss those things. So, yeah. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it for tonight, unless you had anything else. Oh, thank you. All right, so we are going to enjoy some um, lovely sushi for our anniversary date night in, and <laughs> we hope you guys have a great night and a great month, and please be sure to come back each Monday and let me know what you're reading, and check in if you have any uh, recommendation requests for books. I'd love to help you guys out. Have a great month. Bye. <laughs>